Today we're going to talk about a little known show called Daria. It premiered in 1997 and ran till about 2002. It was a spin-off of Beavis and Butthead, or at least its character was spun off from Beavis and Butthead, Daria Morgendorfer. The show centers around her, her family, and some of her friends in high school in the city of Lawndale. And it's never really mentioned where Lawndale is, to my knowledge, but uh, it might be in Texas, considering that Daria originally was living in Highland, Texas, where Beavis and Butthead were. So... It's quite possible that that was the case, but I'm not entirely sure. There's really no continuity between the two series other than they share a character. But Daria only appears a couple episodes in, I believe, the first season, and then she's never seen again. Uh, this show, I didn't particularly grow up with. I remember seeing glimpses of it when it was on the end, the end being the Teen Nick block of Noggin, which was a network that was a joint effort between Sesame Workshop and Nickelodeon. I don't believe we had Noggin until we had digital cable, but I do remember the end because it was basically, you knew you were on the end when all you saw was Degrassi or Degrassi The Next Generation just on the complete schedule, whatever you were scrolling through. That's when you knew you would hit Noggin slash the end. And I think it ran on that block from about 2006 to maybe 2000... I don't remember if it was 10 or 11. It ran for quite a, quite a while. It ran all of its reruns on the end. And I think that's most people's exposure to it, because the original MTV run... I don't think the original MTV run, although it was successful... I don't feel like the original MTV run really had that successful of a following. I don't think it got a cult following until they started rebroadcasting it, as is the case with a lot of shows. But, yeah, the show centers around Daria Morgendorfer and her family. It's very mundane, very slice of life. There's actually a lot of parallels tonally to King of the Hill. It's, it shares a lot of the tone of King of the Hill. It's very down-to-earth very grounded the art style is incredibly realistic they have a lot of exterior shots of houses and they show all of these different things and buildings and everything is grounded in realism there's no weirdly proportioned characters like beavis and butthead it's very very realistic uh some of the more unrealistic elements are perhaps daria herself daria is she's somewhere in between a child prodigy and having some sort of disorder some sort of mental disorder not disability disorder because she is she says some of the most brilliant things in one moment but then in other moments she says things that are just completely nihilistic and downer and she's a black pillar she really is a lot of the time she's dour and depressing but she's not particularly goth she's more punk if anything else i think that's the best way to describe her although her best friend jane kind of looks gothic they're both pretty much fairly punk they're going for that overall aesthetic of the era of the sort of alternate you know alternate lifestyle type thing that was big in the 90s early 2000s which included goth and punk and nerd and jock all those different classifications so she fell into that in the first half of the show was primarily her and her friend Jane just going through the motions of high school and all the things that surrounded them and the surrounding characters and them not taking stuff too seriously. It wasn't until you got to the end of season three when they actually kind of shifted the formula to where it was Daria and Jane kind of riffing on everybody around them. They still did it throughout the series, but the focus kind of became introducing a little bit of teenage melodrama into the mix, and that's when it got to be, for me, where I started to check out a little bit. I watched the whole thing. I enjoyed the whole thing, but once it got to the point where they were diving into teen melodrama and creating drama between Daria and Jane, who had the best dynamic between the series, throughout the series, that's when I started to go, okay, I'm not a big fan of this decision. Because it's clear that when they started the show, they intended for it to be just a simple slice of life and to show the juxtaposition between Daria and Jane and pretty much everybody else and how they just were kind of skirting through life while everybody else was stressed out about this and, and you know, running around about that. But Daria and Jane were just kind of commenting on it all sarcastically and dry, monotone voices. And 
But then they started giving Jane a little bit more character, and that was coming into conflict with Daria, who seemingly had no character. And then they started kind of forcing her to have a little bit more character as the later seasons went on till they got to the finale. She doesn't... Daria herself does not have real character development. You can tell they tried to give her some, but they didn't want to take away her monotone voice and her attitude towards life. So they put her in things that were in conflict with her way of life, and she had to choose what kind of person she was. But they didn't really develop the character to where she walked away thinking, I don't feel this way about this anymore. At least not to my knowledge or to my memory. It's been a couple of days since I watched the series all the way through. And it's actually on Pluto TV a lot of the time. They've got the first season up there, but they broadcast the show quite frequently on the Comedy Central Animation channel on Pluto TV. I think it's sometime after midnight. But um, it's a it's a fine show. It was very watchable for me. I liked a lot of the characters. There were a couple characters I didn't like. I think what surprised me the most was the development of Daria's sister, Quinn. That felt like authentic character development because at the start of the show, spoiler alert, by the way, for the show that's pretty much ancient by today's standards, being from 1997, she starts out the show being a sol... Uh, a, um, not, I almost said solid. I don't know why I said that. She started out the show as a shallow, self-absorbed, fashion-obsessed teenager. This is Daria's sister, Quinn, we're talking about, just as a reminder. And then she develops into a character with more empathy, more caring about other people, and caring less about what is sh shallow and superficial, and showing that she's actually pretty intelligent herself and capable of learning, and got a lot of similarities to her sister in that regard. And I felt like that was, a pr that was pretty wholesome character development. She was one of the only characters that got a consistent character development arc to my memory. I don't remember the series ending with a lot of the characters really being different from where they started. They all kind of were the same. Daria herself, even in her acceptance speech, she pretty much just said, yeah, I felt the same way about high school when I started as when I ended. So, it is what it is. And that's just kind of who she is. I like the Six Sad World segments. Whenever they're watching a TV, they show a promo for a show called Six Sad World, which I guess is a parody of stuff like Ripley's Believe It or Not and other stuff at the time where it was just these weird but true facts and that sort of thing, or is it really true? Do we really know if it's true? That sort of thing. I think it's more Ripley's than anything else. But they always had really, really funny promos that they made for those. They had a bunch of them throughout the series. It was a really fun running gag. I actually think that was one of the highlights of the show for me personally. But once they started diving into the melodrama and they started forcing... It's one thing to have melodrama in a family because it's a family dynamic. That's fine. You can explore that. I think that's a good thing. But when they did it between Daria and Jane where it wasn't before, where they had such brilliant chemistry, that's where it started to feel forced for me. And I said, okay, I'm not really on board with this. You're just doing this because you want to explore this towards the end of the series. And the catalyst for it was at the end of season three, Jane had a boyfriend and... That boyfriend ended up falling in love with Daria, and they had a little bit of a falling out. They got back, you know, they, Daria ends up getting up with the guy, and Jane's okay with it, and they're, you know, everything's hunky-dory, but then, as Jane goes and does different things throughout seasons four and five, you know, it, it challenges her and Daria's friendship, and they always end up, you know, being fine in the end, but they, they just introduce unnecessary tension because Jane actually just wants to be a human being. And Daria's just like, well, that's stupid. You know? It just feels needless. It feels unnecessary. It feels like, I don't know, maybe they were getting complaints back in the day that the characters just were too boring and there was there was too much of an unrealistic response to real-life situations. I don't know what it was, but that that whole dynamic of Daria being so disconnected from the world around her made it very fascinating made a really interesting television. Now, of course, there were times where it came across as holier than thou. There was a lot of blatantly politically progressive preaching that came from Daria every once in a great while, and that was very eye-rolling and surprising for a show from 1997, but it was absolutely there, and that, that was one of the worst parts of the series, and it manifested itself not through Daria, but through Jody, one of her classmates. And I don't want to call her her friend because the show never really specifically called her a friend. They struck up sort of a... Not a friendship, but a... I don't... I, would you say kinship? Uh, they, they were acquainted... Acquaintanceship, maybe. Uh, Jody was just awful. 
Jody was, we want to paint minorities in the best light possible, so we're going to make her a black chick that is an overachiever. She's got two parents that are massively successful business people. We're, we're going we're gonna to use her as the model, the model minority. And she's going to have incredibly progressive values that she always is speaking up about. And she's she's going to attend all the protests and do all of that stuff. You know, that was her repeated character arc ad nauseum. To the point where when they were talking about rebooting Daria, one of the primary focal points was they were going to pair Daria with Jody and call the show Daria and Jody. Eventually, they cut Daria out entirely. And they just made it about Jody, and now it's going to be apparently a short TV series that airs. I don't know where it's going to be. I think it's going to be on Paramount Plus, probably. And I have no interest. I have zero interest. They cut Daria out of her own freaking show because of identity politics. I can't say that I'm surprised because this character was identity politics way ahead of its time, back when that sort of viewpoint was still in a large minority. It, it just. It's bonkers. I would have been excited about the idea of them rebooting the series and seeing what they could do. I also would have dreaded it because, again, there's a lot of... I'm not just saying that they espouse progressive politics. They verbally said, you know, you need to be more progressive with your ways of thinking about insert progressive cause here. They had a teacher that was a man-hating feminist, whether or not you want to call that progressivism, but they had a teacher that was a blatant man-hating feminist to the point where she bullied male teachers and students for, for laughs. Somebody thought this was hilarious. Now, I'm not offended by that, but in this hyper-politicized day and age, it has aged horribly. It has aged horrifically. It does not stand the test of time at all. And to the point where even, I think, when they were doing that character, they must have gotten some complaints or something because they ended up kind of giving her less to do and less to say. You know, and she's got a really shrill, annoying voice. I don't remember what the teacher's name was, but I mean, when you watch the series, you'll definitely notice if you haven't seen it before. So that was a negative for me. Originally, I had a list of positives and negatives to the show, but I didn't want to read off that because I feel like it kind of throws me off my game. But as an overall, I liked this show. I liked the way it portrayed the Morgendorfer family. I liked the way that it was written for the most part when it was not political or when it was not trying to force specific drama just to be kind of akin to something that would have been on the WB at the time or keeping up with stuff like Degrassi or whatever. I think when it stuck true to what it was in the first two and a half seasons, it was good. And towards the later seasons, it was still okay, but it was it kind of lost its way a little bit. During the transition sequences, they had a lot of licensed music, and this is where you can tell it was primarily an MTV show because they had a lot of licensed music throughout these transitions, even in the movie specials. You know, and occasionally when they would have certain scenes, they would have licensed music playing to the point where when they, when they re-released the show in physical media, they had to rewrite a lot of the music because they couldn't get the rights back. So they didn't have those close ties with MTV anymore, even though it was technically an MTV-produced thing. But... As we all know, with YouTube, music rights are, you know, nauseating to navigate. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, as an overall, Daria is a solid show. I'd give it, I'd give it a thumbs up. If I had to give it a number rating, I'd probably give it a 7 or 8 out of 10. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I mentioned the points that are big drawbacks for me and this again these toonie talks aren't even specifically reviews i just kind of do that because i sound they sound like reviews they're just kind of my own thoughts and overviews i guess they're technically reviews but i don't like to think of them as that but as far as a review of the show i think it's good i would i recommend it sure sure i would in fact i think this is one of the most watchable adult animated sitcoms i've ever seen like kids could absolutely watch this there's very little that would be inappropriate for kids in this, 100%. This is why it's broadcast on the M, because there was very little. They had to censor, I think, one scene. One scene, and it really wasn't that explicit, but they, I think they had to do it anyway. That, that was more, I think, of a network decision than anything else, but... I mean, it is incredibly watchable. It, it is very... It, it They use minor curse words, that's it. But other than that, it's... It's very watchable. And I, I, that is a plus to the show that a lot of shows of that genre to this day barely do. 
you know, more of the shows that come out, they get more and more vulgar, and I just roll my eyes because they think it's a substitute for humor, and it's just not because it worked so well for South Park for however many seasons that's been going, so we got to do that. Rick and Morty did that. That new show, Royal Crackers, is doing it. I, it's just, no, stop it. Do a show that's intelligently written and doesn't rely on being vulgar about every little thing. For gosh sakes, adult animation doesn't mean it has to be vulgar and immature. That, that If you're creative with that, sure, that can work. But most shows aren't. They're just obnoxious. So, I mean, Family Guy's fallen into this, American Dad has fallen into this, and I love American Dad. Can't say I really love Family Guy, but the worst offender is South Park because South Park is built on that style of humor, which is why I never liked it. I don't, you know, I don't tune into adult animation just for vulgarity. I don't think that's funny. That's just not me. But Dario just barely has any, and I think that might actually be off-putting to people who are used to it. But for me, I think it's incredibly watchable. It's easy to share. It's a pretty good series. If anything, its biggest flaw is that it's a bit mundane. That's it. It's, it's just a bit mundane, similar to King of the Hill. It's just very mundane. And there are going to be a lot of episodes where not a whole lot happens, but, I mean, if you're interested in what's going on, it'll it'll definitely be good. So let me know what you think, what your memories are with the show in the, down in the comments, if you have any, and what you, what you think if you want to watch the show. Let me know all of that down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Super Koopa TV with another edition of Toonie Talk. I will see you guys all next time. God bless. Have a good one. Peace.